Hey guys, this is Oliver. My new release is out on Disciple this month and I hope you guys like it. Anyways, here's my top five production tips. <laughs> So tip number one, uh, I'd probably say sample library organisation. Uh, this is really good if you've got no ideas for tunes, you can just go through your samples, get them all organised. Uh, the way that I do it is I kind of get sample packs um, that I've bought offline um, and then separate them into genres. Uh, so I've got like a few different genre folders of um, stuff that I regularly use and as you kind of build this up, it really helps to kind of um, to bring a sound together and sort of defines your sound kind of thing if you're kind of reaching for the same samples within reason without overdoing it kind of thing so yeah that's tip number one. So tip number two is racks and project templates. Uh, this really helps speed up workflow especially if you've got an idea going and you want to get it down as quickly as possible. Um, when I've got a, when I start a new project I've got a blank one that loads up. Um, it's got all of some like basic sidechain settings, um, a few drums that I regularly reach to, um, sort of hi-hats, percussion, a um, few instances of blank serum. Um, I've got like a piano in there ready to just throw some chords down. Um, and then just a few empty audio tracks just so I'm ready to go and it's just kind of building blocks that can get going really quickly. Tip number three is to do about mastering. Um, it's always to be not afraid of clipping your master. Um, a lot of people say to keep out of the red and try not to clip, but sometimes it's quite good and it especially helps you get that edge over other people with loudness. So um, my tip there is to just listen with your ears and don't focus too much on the faders going into the red. Because um, you can push it as hard as you want really. Um, just be sure to A-B it with other tunes once you've bounced it to an MP3 because it might sound a little bit different after you export it. Um, but yeah, don't be afraid of clipping, just use your ears and if it sounds good, it sounds good. So number four, uh, this one's really good if you're stuck with a tune again. Um, I do this all the time, I'll load up an acapella of like a pop track or just whatever acapella I can get my hands on. Um, and I'll write a track around it, it really helps for structure. Um, and writing chord progressions. Um, it just really gets the ideas going and if you find yourself following the acapella a little bit too much you can always just transpose it around and then make a totally new idea to it but just make sure not to get too attached to the acapella because obviously you'll have to take that out at some point but it's great if you know you're going to get a vocal for a tune or you're aiming to get one for it. So that really helps me when I'm stuck with ideas. So my fifth and final tip is saturation. Um, it's an effect that I use quite a lot throughout my productions. I've probably got a saturator on every channel at least once or twice. Um, it's really good for just taming transients and like peaks in the waveform. Um, even if I feel like something doesn't need saturation, I'll normally give it a few like few decibel just to trim it off and kind of sausage it as much as I can. Um, the little amounts go a really long way when it comes to mastering because the least amount of high peaks you get, the easier it is you can just press it really loud and get a lot of loudness out of it. <laughs> I'm well loved here as you can see. So guys, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something today. And be sure to check out my release on Disciple. Cheers guys. Order, order, order. Sir, did you remember to like and subscribe after watching this video? No sir, I did not. I sentence you to 10 years of continuously listening to Psytrance. <laughs>